Hi, I am Ma'am PC at kung nandito ka para sa part 2 ng video dahil tapos ka ng panoorin ang part 1. Thank you so much at sana pumasa ka sa lahat ng subject mo. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell para lagi kang updated sa aking mga upcoming videos. So this is the part 2 of my video. Uh, balikan lang natin ng konti. Again, this is a horizontal analysis kung saan kinukuha natin yung liquidity analysis, solvency analysis, and profitability analysis ng financial statement ni Fidel Merchandising. So we're done with liquidity analysis and solvency analysis doon sa nakaraang video sa part 1. Kung hindi nyo pa napapanood, please panoorin nyo muna. At ang link ay nasa description ng video na to. Then... Uh, this time, ang pag-aaralan naman natin or yung kukuhanin naman natin from the financial statement is the profitability analysis kung saan tinitingnan kung kumikita ba ang business at kung gaano yung kakayahan niyang kumita. So, this is a combination of the analysis from statement of financial position plus income statement. At ito na nga yung tinutukoy nating part 2. Uh, summary lang nung napag-usapan sa part 1, ang solvency analysis natin doon sa... Uh, financial statement ni Fidel Merchandising ay it needs improvement dahil nga hindi niya kayang maging stable after paying the long-term long debt. While sa liquidity analysis, the business shows an improvement kasi uh, kayang i-cover ng mga current asset yung current liability niya. However, naglagay tayo dito ng recommendation na i-improve yung credit and collection policy nila dahil mas malaki ang itinaas ng accounts receivable kaysa sa cash na imbis na tumaas ay bumaba pa. So, let's proceed to the income statement horizontal analysis. So, ito yung given natin or yung income statement ng year 2017 and ito naman yung sa 2016 bago natin ipakita. I would like you to know na yung gross profit, yung mga naka-bold le bold le bold letters na terms, like yung gross profit ay nakuha siya dahil we deduct the cost of goods sold to the net sales, while yung operating income nakuha natin siya because we deduct the selling and administrative expenses to the gross profit, and then operating income minus interest expense, that's income before income taxes, then when we deduct the income tax expense, we will get the net income. So, ito naman yung mga given natin for 2016. Kapapansin nyo, meron mga um, question mark yung mga cell na walang laman. So, kayo yung maglagay ng laman. I'll give you time. Pakipause muna yung video. And then, saka nyo nalang ituloy kapag meron na kayong sagot. So, magkano ang gross profit natin ng 2016? What do you think? So, the answer is... 906.9 million pesos. What about sa operating income? Pause yung mga video, tapos i-compute nyo. Okay, the correct answer is 247.4 million pesos. What about the income before income taxes? The answer is 216.9 million pesos. And the net income for 2016 ay 151.9 million pesos. So, ganun pa rin yung gagawin nating process. Sa increase amount, makukuha natin siya by deducting the 2016 amount to the 2017 amount. So, 2017 minus 2016, we will get 474.6 for the net sales. For the cost of goods sold, we have 200.3 million. For the gross profit, we have 247.3 million. Selling and administrative expenses, we have 229.7 million. Operating income, we have 44.6 million. Maganda, ano? Kasi wala pang decrease in amount so far. Interest expense is 60.4 million. Pero tingnan natin, baka kasi mga expenses or bayarin ay hindi siya nagde-decrease. Income before income tax. Nako, ito na. Meron na tayong negative amount. Decrease of 15.8 million. Income tax expense ay nag-decrease din by 4.7 million. And then yung net income natin ay decrease by 11.1 million 
million. So, dito naman tayo sa percentage. So, makukuha natin siya by doing this formula. Increase in amount divided by 2016 amount times 100. For net sales, we have 27.3%. Cost of goods sold, 24.1%. Gross profit, we have 30.2%. Selling and administrative expense, we have 34.8%. Operating income, we have 18%. Interest expense, we have 198%. Napakalaki naman nun. Then, income before income taxes, bumaba ng 7.3%. Bumaba yung income, no? Then, bumaba din naman yung income tax ng 7.2%. Kasi bumaba yung income, so bumaba din yung tax. Then, yung net income ay bumaba ng 7.3%. So, ito po yung kabuuan ng income statement natin. Tingnan mabuti kung tama yung copy nyo. And from this, ay gagawa tayo ng mga analysis. So, ito yung data, gumawa tayo ng mga analysis. From the income statement, we have to make conclusion between the net sales and the net income. So, magkano ba, uh, uh, ilan ba ang percent ng itinaas or binaba ng net sales? So, meron tayong 27.3%. Well, yung net income ay bumaba ng 7.3%. So, regardless na may naibenta ka at tumaas yun ng 7%, 27.3% yung kinita talaga ng business, yung pumasok na pera sa business as income ay bumaba pa. Kapag bumaba ba ang income, let's expect that our boss or the owner of the company will get mad at magtatanong, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what happened? Oh, di ba yung WTF? What happened? Ano ba nangyari? So, ikaw as accountant, kailangan magpaliwanag. So, sabi mo, relax boss, let me explain. So, let's explain. Kailangan mo mapaliwanag sa amo mo or sa boss mo, sa leader mo kung bakit bumaba ang net income ng kumpanya. So, nandito tayo ngayon sa isang uh, interrogation sa bawat karakter na nandito sa income statement. Who among you have caused the major decline in the net income? Familiar ba kayo sa Among Us? So, dahil uh, maglalaro tayo ng Among Us sa part na to. So, si cost of goods sold ba ang nag-cause uh, ng major decline in the net income? So, keep in mind ang hinahanap natin ay yung major, major cause of decline in the net income. Or si ad selling and administrative expenses, di kaya si interest expense, or si income tax expense. So, sino kaya sa kanilang apat? So, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-point finger, finger dito sa kahit na sino, sino na to without any analysis. So, dapat pakinggan natin ang bawat statement ng bawat isa sa kanila bago natin sila i-judge. Okay, dito muna tayo kay Cost of Goods Sold. Sabi ni Cost of Goods Cost of Goods Sold, I am not the imposter. Imposter. <laughs> okay, so here's the proof. Ito yung statement niya. Cost of Goods Sold increased by 24.1%. So, tumaas ang ang Uh, presyo ng mga paninda by 24.1%. Pero kahit tumaas daw siya, sabi niya, even with this increase in COGS, gross margin registered at 30.2% increase. Tumaas pa rin naman yung gross profit kahit tumaas yung presyo ng mga paninda. Ibig sabihin, hindi si cost of goods sold ang salarin. Kung bakit nagkaroon ng major decline sa net income. Sige. Your statement is valid. Next, next character. Si selling and administrative expense ba? Sabi niya, I will bet my career. It is not me who caused the major decline in the net income. And here's uh, the proof. Ito yung mga evidence niya. So, ayan, makikita niyo, selling and administrative expenses showed a 34.8% increase. Pero kahit na tumaas ang selling and admin expenses, Income from operation recorded at 18% increase. Tumaas din naman ang income. So, hindi siya ang nag ng major decline sa net income. Kasi kahit na pumasok siya, tumaas pa din ang income. Ang operating income, hindi naman bumaba. So, sabi ni CPA, hmm, okay, Mr. Say, S-A-E, your statement is valid. Next. Si yellow ba? Si interest expense ba? Sabi ni interest expense, you asked for loan and now you're blaming me? Parang kasalanan ko? 
Oo nga naman. <laughs> diba? Uh, loan ng loan yung company, tapos parang kasalanan ni interest expense na na lumaki yung deduction sa net income or yung uh, decrease binaw, nabawas sa net income ng business. So, pakinggan mo na natin yung statement niya, no? So, makikita natin na si interest expense ay tumaas ng pagkataas-taas talaga. Pakatayog at paka, napakala uh, tayog na lipad niya para sa ranggola lang na hindi na nakita. <laughs> so, ang tinas niya ay 198%. And this increase resulted in a decrease in net income before or income before taxes, de, rather, despite the increase in net sale. So, ulitin natin, no, yung pagtaas ni interest expense daw na 198% ang nag ng major decrease sa income before taxes kahit na ang taas-taas ng net sales. So, sabi ni CPA, hmm, Mr. Interest Expenses, I knew it. I need to know if there is someone worse than you. So, gusto pa malaman ni CPA kung may mas... Uh, major pa, mas worse pa sa ginawa ni interest expense na pagbaba sa value ng income before taxes. Kasi may natitira pa eh. Si income tax expense. Sabi ni income tax expense. Uh, BIR told me to go here. Trabaho lang, sir. So, income tax expense ay nag-decrease. Bumaba pa nga siya eh. 7.2%. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya yung may kasalanan ng major decline sa net income kasi kahit siya mismo ay bumaba din. So, you are cleared, Mr. Income Tax Expense. So, among here, among the character in the uh, on the screen, sino kaya ang nag ng major decline in the net income? Not cost of goods sold? Hindi si selling and admin expense? Hindi si income tax expense? Kundi si interest expense? Napakataas naman kasi talaga nung, nung itinaas niya. Bakit kaya? Sige, tanong niyo sa sarili niyo kung bakit kaya. Ang clue ay... Um, malalaman nyo sa naging analysis natin sa part 1. So, ano ba yung pinakaunang analysis natin sa part 1? Bakit kaya ang taas-taas ng interest expense? Saan ba nakukuha yung interest expense? Di ba sa mga utang? So, matatandaan nyo na sa part 1, napakalaki ng loan payable ng business. Kaya dito, sa interest expense, ang laki din ng binayaran niya. So, ito yung naging dahilan kung bakit lumaki ang uh, deduction or decrease sa net income. Yung pagkakaroon ng loan payable na napakalaki which results to so much or too much increase in interest expense. So, gawa natin ng analysis. So, introhan mo natin. The net sales increased by 27.3% during the year. However, despite the increase in sales, net income decreased by 7.3%. Kahit daw tumaas pa yung net sale, bumaba naman yung kinita ng business. So, idagdag natin yung statement ng bawat character. Yan lang yun, pinagsunod-sunod lang natin. At yung naka-underline yan yung pinaka-conclusion uh, or yung main point sa analysis. This increase, which is yung sa interest expense na 198%, resulted in a decrease in income before taxes despite the increase in net sales. So, that's the analysis. Now, uh, kukuhanin naman natin yung pinagsamang um, statement of financial position and income statement. Kasi doon natin makukuha yung profitability analysis. So, ayan yung dalawang um, financial statement. So, dito sa income statement, kukuha na natin yung sales or net sales. So, tumaas siya ng 27.3%. While dito sa statement of financial position, mapapansin nyo kinat ko na kasi ang kailangan lang naman natin ay yung mga factors na nakaka sa net sales. Which are cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. So, dito sa mga data na to or information na to, meron kasi mga questionable information. Una dyan, why does the net sales increase when the cash declared a decrease? Tumaas naman yung benta pero bumaba yung cash. Di ba napaka-ironic nun? It's because of... Yan, yan yung answer. There is an increase in accounts receivable. Sobrang yung increase sa accounts receivable, oh, more than half. 64.1%. Uh, which... Um, signifies that the sales probably taken mostly through credit. So, uh, maaari na kaya 
uh, bumaba ang cash despite na tumaas ang net sales dahil yung mga binenta nila ay pinautang lang nila. Second, questionable information, why does the increase in net sales did not match to the increase in inventory? Masyadong malayo. Tingnan mo yung inventory, tumaas siya by 57.7%. Well, si net sales, 27.3%. So, halos kalahati lang. Hindi hindi sila nagmatch. Siguro kung si net sales ay nasa 50% din, ay hindi siya masyadong questionable. So, from here, maaari nating makonclude na there might be stocks, may mga paninda, under obsolescence. Or yung mga outdated na, or mga hindi na maibenta kasi hindi na uso, or bulok na na expired na or slow moving items in the inventory yung mahirap maibenta yung product kasi hindi gusto ng market so yan yung dalawang questionable information natin na sagutan natin so tabi natin sa gilid at gawin natin ang analysis so analysis is a formal declaration of the information you have gathered so introhan natin current asset increase by 9.1% this increase is a result of 64.1% increase in accounts receivable and 57.7 increase in inventory so yun daw yung um, nagpa two major accounts na nagpataas sa current asset si accounts receivable at inventory analysis natin meron pang konting recommendation Uh, this increase in accounts receivable and sales management, ang recommendation natin, check their credit and collection policy. Kasi uh, most of their sales ay nakarecord sa accounts receivable, hindi cash. For prompt collection of accounts, especially that increase in net sales was only 27.3% and cash decreased by 32.5%. So, second recommendation, likewise, the increase in merchandise inventory necessitates management to check their inventories. So, uh, tingnan or i-check yung inventory. Baka kasi may mga stocks for obsolescence or slow-moving items in the inventory. Comparing their increase in sales and increase in inventory. So, ito yung mga analysis natin. Sa iba ba, gumawa tayo ng conclusion out of that analysis. So, ang conclusion natin, the overall Operating performance of Fidel Merchandising for year-ended December 31 may indicate an unfavorable movement. Hindi masyadong maganda because of decrease in net income. Siyempre kapag mababa yung uh, net income or kinita ng business, hindi siya maganda, hindi siya favorable. Accompanied by decrease in cash, bumaba din yung cash uh, despite of increase in sales. So kung isasummarize natin yung tatlong analysis natin for solvency analysis, The business needs improvement. For liquidity analysis, it shows an improvement naman. Nag-improve naman yung business in, in terms of liquidity. And sa profitability analysis, hindi masyado maganda yung performance ng business because ang limabas na analysis ay unfavorable movement dahil nga may mga inventory na hindi ma maaaring hindi na ibibenta at uh, yung mga nabibenta ng business ay puro true credit. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Uh, thank you so much, Lance Mendoza, for editing my video. Thank you so much sa mga estudyante ko na hanggang part 2 ay nakarating. Thank you so much, ABM Online PH, for the sponsorship of my reference book. And follow nyo yung, yung business namin, The Global Goods and Tita Hofi Cafe by Lance and Camille. God bless everyone!